I work out how to get out of chat. Whoops, I'm recording. <laughs> Hello guys, we're professionals. <laughs> um, and I don't know how to work chat. Uh, there we go. Welcome to Theola Gaming, the super professional web show where we talk about, um, at the moment, Islam and its place in uh, terrorist attacks. And so, um, it kind of flows in a lot more to our previous topic than other episodes will, so I will recommend you watch that if this is the first one you watch, but if not, um, we just discussed some of the causes for terrorism, what it was, and why it's a bad thing compared to other war, uh, or like a worse thing. Alright, so let's get into it then. Um, so, Mitchell mentioned previously about how uh, a lot of what drives the people to be um, for ISIS to be specifically to be terrorists is their brand of Islam and um, do you, do you want to say what you just said summarize what you just said you'll probably do a better job Sorry, than I will. yep um, yeah I think when you're thinking about the role of ISIS um, and other terrorist organizations um, you have to take them on, you know, the basis of what they believe themselves, not what we believe about their belief system, um, and realize that their actions are ideologically motivated by their um, religion um, rather than by a secular line of reasoning, which sometimes we try to um, fit their worldview into. Just in the aspect of balance, though, I will say that, like all wars, not everyone fights for the same reason. I'm sure there's plenty in ISIS Absolutely. who are just there to kill or just there for power because they wanted anything to fight for, um, for well, a matter of secular reasons. Too. But it is a Islamic state, an Islamic caliphate designed to, um, with the stated goal of bringing about, like, Islamic rule over the world. Um, so for uh, most people that will be um, their driving factor, the Islam. Right, so... Um, let's start by sort of compare, oh this is, uh, like disclaimer, ouch, ouch, ouch. none of us are, I mean we're not Muslim here, and I don't, none of us have looked too extensively into it, like I've read parts of the Quran and looked into it a little bit, and it all sounds pretty, like he's looked into it, but we're not like Islamic scholars or anything, so take what we say with a grain of salt, but what are the differences between Islam and Christianity, like why aren't we off fighting for some um, kingdom. Well, Opportunity hasn't presented itself yet. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate? I think a big reason is that we don't really... We're... <laughs> yeah, well, what Mitch was saying before about, you know, these guys, they've got this crazy belief that um, the end of the world will happen when these situation um, arises, where the, when the caliphate is a thing and all that sort of thing. Like, you know, that's almost exactly the same line of reasoning as you find in many, like, fundamentalist Christian sort of circles. The only thing is that no one in the fundamentalist Christian circles has yet kind of um, gone, hey, hang on a second, maybe we could make this happen faster if we started up a terrorist organization, you know? Like, well, maybe if they well, did, a lot of people, people have go, but... yeah, that sounds like an idea. Yeah, I think, though, if you... It's um, completely unbiblical. <laughs> yeah, like, well, the, it's, it, it's unbiblical in the same way that the Islamic State is un-Quranic. Like, any Islamic scholar would say what they're doing is, is terrible, but, like, they can find the bits to pick and choose to justify what they're doing in the same way that anyone who wanted to do that with the Bible could. Yeah, I mean, that's entirely correct. I, I think... I'm not going to say that 
uh, certainly not all Muslims believe what ISIS believe and it would be terribly offensive to some, I'm sure, to suggest that. Um, but ISIS have gotten their beliefs from the Quran and they're consistent within their beliefs and if you if you do look thoroughly into what they believe um, it does align with some of the things the Quran says um, and perhaps other scholars would interpret that differently um, and I don't want to get too in depth on that but there's a difference between that and what Christians believe because um, fighting to attain an earthly kingdom is very much the opposite of what's at the heart of our faith. Um, so any Christian who goes down that road is actually going outside the limits of what Christianity can be. Um, and I would suggest that they're no longer Christians. Well, there are many Muslims who would say the same thing about ISIS. Yeah, but there's... Um... As I understand the difference... Like any Muslim who's not in ISIS would say that about ISIS. As I understand the difference, it's more that... Um, like with Christianity... With Christianity, we don't particularly care... I mean, we care about the world, but... It's not our place. It's not our home. We're from a... We look for a heavenly kingdom to come later. Um, and everything oh. we do is to work for that. Whereas... Um, with Islam, there is a focus on creating an earthly kingdom, making things on earth here um, right, um, like right according to Islamic Sharia. But fundamentalist Christians have that same approach, you know. You might think, hey, let's not do the whole earthly kingdom thing. I definitely think let's not do the whole earthly kingdom thing. I believe Jesus thinks let's not do the whole earthly kingdom thing there are a lot of like legit christians who would strongly disagree well i think that from the bars obviously our hope isn't in the kingdom we create in god's kingdom and we're not afraid of people um you know stopping that from coming about whereas in islam there's almost like a fear that unless they do something about themselves Allah won't have his kingdom which is completely opposite to christianity does that make sense and also in Christianity, oh, well, we have, like, to, to our Christianity. Well, well Christianity. <laughs> well, Christianity, what, um, Christianity, and Islam are. They're both following specific leaders. We follow Jesus, and um, Muslims follow Muhammad's teaching. Now, if we follow Jesus consistently, then we have to live as Jesus did, um, and he was definitely not a a soldier king um quite the opposite actually he actually said that not to what exactly um so trying to create an earthly kingdom by force cannot be christian because it is not following jesus um now if you look at in comparison at islam and look at the life of muhammad then you look you're seeing something entirely different he did um begin to conquer the world um under islamic rule now, I don't want to say too much about Islam again, because I don't know, I, I'm not personally um, a scholar in it, like I, I haven't read the Quran myself, but just purely from who we're following, if you're following Jesus versus following Muhammad, you have to believe different things. Hmm. Of course, I'm dead. Yeah, I got hit in the back by a flesh pound. It wasn't fun. Um, so I've looked a little bit into... Um, at least... Well, basically I did a rebuttal once on... Um, so I put on a whole bunch of those quotations from the Quran about all these terrible things, and this is why Islam, without question, is evil. So I decided, hey, I've got a Quran sitting on my bookshelf. Uh, let's look these up. And what I found was that Nearly all of those verses against, um, like not all, there were some about killing unbelievers and the various things of war and so forth were about reclaiming Mecca. Um, it's sort of like, sort of like the whole Israel Canaan Old Testament thing. Here's this promise, well I didn't read much context around it, but I assume it's sort of like here's this promised land 
These are, this is how you claim it. This is how we will have claimed it. These are the things to do to keep claiming it and allow Allah's rule to go. And I think that's how a lot of the, say, moderate Muslims um, sort of view it. It's more in the past, all this um, kingdom claiming and warfare, um, like being told to go to warfare. So they have Mecca, so it's sort of more... Like, I obviously I don't know, as our disclaimer has said several times, but that's just what I found in my reading of the Quran. And there's also, um, like this I actually heard from an Islamic guy and sort of saw a bit of myself. The Quran is basically a giant rule book. Like it lays out everything in your life from what to eat to how to eat to how to go to the bathroom to how to wage war. And it's got some pretty specific things in there about like, you're not even supposed to cut down too many trees around a city you're besieging, let alone kill the civilians in it. And well, it depends on the part of it. Is that early or late? Because it does have it, it, it does vary. Oh well, it's no. These are like their rules for their rules of engagement, as we were talking about earlier. This is what the Quran laid out for them. Um, of course, there's plenty of punishments for breaking Sharia law that kind of go um, are kind of killing civilians. Um, depending on how you want to look at them, but... Uh, the actual warfare... Like... At least from what I know... Terrorism is not a very Islamic way of warfare. You're... Um, no, you're going against Islam in the way you wage war. Like, it, Islamic warfare would look like it did in the f sort of first centuries. It would be countries <laughs> uniting together and invading other countries. Your standard sort of warfare. So like a proper jihad, like proper Islamic jihad these days would be like countries of the Middle East all uniting and going to invade Europe again like they did for thousands of years. See, ISIS believe that, but they um, don't believe that those other Islamic countries are true Muslims. Um, and so they're consistent with, again, um, their interpretation of the crime because um, they see the way that the other Muslim countries live and say that's not actually following Allah, or following Muhammad, and so we are right to excommunicate them and indeed fight against them. All Zs on the scope. Back to it, mes amis. Okay. All right, so um, and this is pretty related to our topic. So let's talk about. Religion and warfare. This is one of the big things thrown out about against religion in that it's a cause for war and it'll always cause war and that's why it's evil and should be eliminated. What do people think on that? I think you touched on it earlier, Jesse, didn't you? When you said there are many reasons for war and chief among them is, you know, holding land. Yeah, and I think we also, um, like, we touched on it a bit earlier, or maybe we didn't, and I was just going to say it, but there's plenty of things other than religion that work like a religion and create warfare, because that's how people work. Like, ha our modern wars, that most of them, that allows them to do a thing. yeah, or even just spreading an ideology to the rest of the world to form the kingdom you want. Like, how many wars, modern wars are about spreading democracy and freedom hmm. to the rest of the world, or spreading communism previously, or all manner of other ideologies that aren't religious, but people believe that this is the right way to do things. These people are doing the wrong way, let's... Um, and they're hurting people, as we see it, by doing this. So let's fight for them. So, like... Even if you somehow could eliminate all religious belief from the world and um, make everyone a peaceful, democratic um, atheist, you'd still see the same things. People would go, oh, they're not really peaceful, democratic atheists. And they're dangerous. Let's go kill them before they spread their dangerous ideology. Because, like, in theory, all ideologies are great. They create this nice, perfect society. But people will corrupt anything. 
I mean, that's the basis of our Christian belief, really. People are kind of... Uh, we're bad at doing life, guys. We've messed up life. We don't know how to do it, and we need God to show us how to do it. Uh, we need Jesus to die for us to fix the mess that we made. Anyone got anything? Any other thoughts? That's a good call. I like your call. I, I have an with interesting the... article um, related to what no, ISIS say they believe. Um, I know it's not easy to, we can't just discuss on the spot here, but I'll... Um, Send it to me and I'll link it in the uh, description. Yeah, I was going to say, you can link that at the bottom of the video if people want to um, read that. Of course, it is only one source, so you don't want to take everything it says that as complete gospel truth, but it's certainly something interesting to read. I'm back. Right, so interested to hear your thoughts on all that, Adam, being an atheist yourself. Um, so what do you think about the whole religion and war thing? Well, as I said earlier, I think there's uh, a great many things that um, could lead people to go to war. And I think we're I think just humans, uh, great at othering other people. And it doesn't matter what you're othering them in regards to. Um, whether it be they're not of the right religion, or they're not of the right skin colour, or they don't agree to the same economic doctrine. It's so easy for us to, as I said, other groups of people and think of them differently and treat them lesser. Which makes it all the more easy to justify things. So let's talk about that for a minute, because that's been one of, in my opinion, the worst fallouts of... I mean, obviously it's terrible for the people of Syria, but one of the fallouts has been that a lot of people in the West have become increasingly biased against anyone who could be Muslim, basically any Middle Easterner. Um, they just see them as something other now, some dangerous... Um, invader trying to come change our ways and with their corrupt and dangerous beliefs. I mean, I, I did... Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, uh, I read something that, I mean, that's... It was eliminating the grey zone, I think, was the, uh, the, the terms of it, which was essentially that make um, the West hostile to um, Muslims, so they're either left with the choice of stay in the West, or I guess join up with ISIS. You know, I mean, black and white thinking. I'm not sure how true all that is, but it's something that um, I saw come up in discussions of this in the weeks since the uh, Paris attacks. Yeah, I've heard that before too, and tactically it makes a lot of sense, because they view, they view those Muslims as much an enemy as other people, but they also view them as an ally. So you sort of divide um, divide them from the West, show them that the West is the enemy, they hate you, you've got no place here, come make a place with us. And it works very well. Um, I mean, like as, as we were saying with warfare earlier, um, and terrorism specifically, how you don't have the numbers, I mean, I, I heard it put quite succinctly in that, you know, it, when there's such asymmetry, uh, a good strategy is to, I guess, just make the big guys so angry that they'll hurt themselves. In this case, the big guy is the West, and the making them angry is just fracturing the West from within, if you will. And you can actually sort of, like I said before, that their strategy is kind of working in that, like, we ha sort of have numbers, like, to be quite frank, here in Australia, we do have a problem with racism. There's a quite undercurrent of racism in a lot of things. Sometimes, like a lot of things in Australia, most people are just sort of matter of fact about it and about everything. No one's too strong. I know we don't exactly have like neo-Nazi or KKK groups running around, but 
That said, there are Reclaim Australia rallies that are going on. Yeah. Which is uh, almost near like... neo Nazi. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's not quite kill. Actually, some are kill all the non Australians, but anyway. Um, <laughs> we also. We also see, Australian. we also see through that yeah, and the yeah. numbers of people joining ISIS that I think Australia, we are, if not their biggest, one of the biggest sources of like non-Arabic recruits for Westerners. ISIS. Yeah. yeah, and localized Westerners because we're making, we're very much making this not a country for them. They don't have a place here, so they go and try and make one. They feel left with no option. Now the point I was going to make earlier too was um, it, a lot of the trouble with this debate is that there's no room for being mo like moderate or a voice of both sides. I mean, you got one side who thinks all Muslims and everything to do with Islam is completely evil and should we should just wipe it out and all the countries should be white, and then you got the other side who's like, no, nah, Islam's completely harmless. They just want peace. There's absolutely nothing wrong and. We should get rid of all the other guys. But I think we need uh, a bit of a mid-ground in that in the there are some troubling <laughs> trends with Islam. It's not great with its treatment of women and it's does like it has a propensity towards war um, to create a kingdom. That said, it's not like every Muslim is a jihadist and if they're not, they're just not following their religion right. That's also not true. Um, so I, I kind of wish there was a bit of a middle ground where we could go... Yeah, there, there kind of is a bit of a problem here, guys. You kind of need to think about this as Muslims. But we'll let you do that and not just try and shut our country to you. I guess this comes back to a lot of the black and white thinking. Yeah. Did People it, don't like their grey. No. Which is unfortunate. Because there is a lot of grey about Indeed. Jesse died. Yeah, I did. I've got Damn like it, Jesse. two chainsaw guys and a flesh pound. It also killed our random friend. Yeah, I think that chainsaw guy might have killed me first. And thus, viewers, our fearless leader Jesse was slaughtered on the battlefield. Yep. And these chainsaw guys take so much to kill. Yeah. I've got the like buzz saw gun, and I'm ah, oh, there we go. He's gone. Oh, I'm so dead though. There's a fire guy behind you though. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that. If I can survive this, if I can survive this, I'll be very happy with myself. I've got two blades left. Well for me. Ah, <laughs> so close. Bye bye. That was a fun gun to play oh, with. Oh, oh. <laughs> Damn it. Ouch. <clears throat> Alright, so the fight for survival has kind of overwhelmed our commentary here. Does anyone <laughs> have any more thoughts on anything we've talked about? We were doing remarkably well though. We stayed quite mm. on topic. Yeah, we were. We were worried that playing such a fast-paced game would kind of kill our commentary, but it appears we can do it. Well, it's notable that it, um, we all died while we were giving our commentary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we would have been playing this game better if we weren't giving commentary, but our commentary didn't suffer too much. That's the important thing. <laughs> oh, here he comes to you, Jacob. He's already killed several people. <laughs> okay, Jay-Z will save us. <laughs> As it currently... Uh, Daisy's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like he's gonna die. So, so for the record here, Jay Z is not much of a PC shooter player. So the fact that Jay Z is the remaining one is uh, is pretty it's pretty much the reason why we lost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was on you, Jacob, and you died. <laughs> if it's Mech Warrior, though, he's like one of the best in the world. If we play Mech Warrior, then yeah, he'll kill us all and then win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. So anyway, to the topic. <laughs> <laughs> I got 189 kills. Nice. 189. What's what's a good amount? Well, that's only 100 more than me. So. <laughs> I killed 172. I've got. 200 and... Oh, it's that second top one. No, that's that dude. Where's my kills? 
Oh, here. 160. So slash, no, no, slash, this slash, slash. that I got on the last round, I did more damage with that than I did with every other weapon combined. <laughs> it was a good I, round. I did 16,000 damage with my, uh, with my greatsword. Alright, so we're completely in-game now, so does anyone else have anything on topic, or...? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, if not, I'll just... Not that I can think of. Cool. Well, that's been the week. Um, see you guys next time.